I would like to express my most sincere, most sincere condolences on behalf of the National Transportation Safety Board to the friends and family of the deceased pilot. I'd also like to express my gratitude for the neighbors who came to the aid of the pilot before EMS could arrive. I'd like to thank the North Carolina Highway Patrol, the Iredale County EMS and Fire Department, the Troutman Fire Department, and any other local agencies that were assisting on scene yesterday. NTSB has a federal mandate to investigate all civil aviation accidents in the United States and to determine the probable cause. We do this to try to prevent these accidents from happening again. We arrived here on scene this morning and we are still very much in the preliminary portions of what will be a very methodical investigation. The facts is we know them thus far, and again, these are preliminary. November 539 Mike Alpha, which is a Piper PA-46 with one person on board, crashed while returning from a local flight out of the Lake Norman Air Park at approximately 1213 yesterday, December 31st. The pilot had departed the air park at approximately 11.52 a.m. and headed northwest for about 30 miles at 3,000 feet before returning to land at the air park. No distress calls were made and the pilot called a two-mile final, which is a very normal radio call to the area track. I am assisted here on scene by the Federal Aviation Administration by Lycoming engines and soon Piper aircraft. We're going to be looking at all of the information we can gather here on scenes, which includes witness um, site examination, uh, wreckage examination, all of the perishable evidence we can get here on scene and in this area before we relocate and recover the aircraft to a salvage facility in Atlanta, Georgia. We will be doing that tomorrow. We'll be looking at the man, the machine, and the environment to figure out what led to this accident. Preliminary indications from some audio we have heard and from the examination of the propeller give the impression that this engine was not producing power at the time of the accident. We'll know more after we complete our engine examination in Atlanta. In about 10 days, we'll publish a preliminary report with the facts as we know them after this on-site portion of our investigation. A full report will take about another 18 months, followed by the issuance of the probable cause by the safety board. Um, we have found all parts of the aircraft on site, which tells us that this was not an in-flight breakup. Uh, if you have any questions, I will take those now and then I will continue with our work on scene. Lynn? Yes. Um, I just want to verify, you said the engine was not producing power at the time of the crash? So the question um, is about the engine and whether it was producing power or not. The initial indications we have from two audio recordings we have of the accident and from uh, the appearance of the propellers indicate that the engine may not have been producing power at the time of the accident. That would have been an emergency situation if the engine was not producing power. Yes, the pilot made a radio call on a two-mile final, and if the engine was not producing power, that means things went bad very quickly after his call of a two-mile final. The fact that he did call a very normal radio call at two-mile final indicates that things were fine when he was two miles out, just a mile from here. 
The witness indica witnesses who witnessed the accident indicated that he came in wings level, but at about a 15 degree downward angle. Um, that indicates that he was in control of the airplane, that it was wings level. Any other questions? I'm not going to ask you to speculate on anything, but can you kind of talk a little bit specifically about what kind of elements you guys will be investigating in days to come that could have been, you know, that, that could play an effect in an, in an incident like this? So what we set out to do at the NTSB is not to determine what went wrong, but to prove that everything is right. So I'm going to try to prove that everything is right with my pilot. That's the man of the man machine and environment. I'm going to try to prove that he was healthy, that he had had sleep, um, that he was um, not under the influence of any kind of drug or medicine, not having any health event, um, that he was proficient and current in the airplane and adequately trained for the kind of flying he was going to do. I'm going to make sure uh, the weather didn't play a part, uh, wildlife, air, you know, uh, bird strike uh, didn't play a part, and I'm going to be looking at the airplane to determine that there was no failure on the airplane. Uh, what I can't prove is what I'm going to dig deeper into, and that is usually how our process works in uh, determining uh, the failures that led to the accident. Um, on scene, we'll be looking at fuel, fueling records. We'll be looking through the logbooks. Uh, we'll be talking with any witnesses um, and collecting all of the perishable evidence before we leave. After the fact, where we have time, is when we'll get dig deeper into the actual aircraft. For the folks around here who might be wanting answers and might not have any familiarity with something like this, can you give them a feel for how long the timeline might be for something like that to actually have more answers? Um, it's, it's about an 18 month process before we get everything back. Uh, autopsies, toxicology, um, any, any material that we have to send for further examination, um, any non-volatile memory on board the airplane that needs analysis. All of these things take time. Uh, it's a, it's a it's a long, very methodical process that we follow. Um, what I would ask your viewers is that if anybody has ring doorbell video or any other video or audio that they could share with us, um, and it doesn't have to be video, it can be audio, I would ask that they would reach out to NTS or witness at ntsb.gov. Just like it sounds, witness at ntsb.gov. That would be very helpful to us. Anything else? All right, I thank you very much, and um, I'll get back to work.